Welcome to an introduction to using Dtrace. This is part 6 of 6. In this video we'll go through two different examples of using Dtrace and put together some of the things that we've seen in previous videos to try to track down the cause of a problem. We'll see a problem relating to a journal mailbox not archiving anything. We'll go through a problem of a user not being able to retrieve an item from their archive. For each problem we run through, we'll discuss an approach that might be used, and then we'll actually go through and do it on a specially prepared lab environment. In this first scenario, the situation is that we have a busy journal mailbox, which for some reason this morning doesn't appear to be clearing down any mails. The mailbox is just growing all the time. Let's review the general approach we might follow, and then we'll see it in action. For this problem, our approach is to stop the journal task, then set up the tracing that we want to do in Dtrace, then restart the journal task so that we can capture all the chatter from the task, and let it run for five or six minutes, stop the tracing, and then we can review it. Let's do that right now in this environment. So firstly, I'm stopping the journal task, and remember that this might be more complicated in your environment if you have multiple tasks or multiple servers. Now let's configure Dtrace as we see here. I'm turning on verbose login for the journal task process and logging out to a file which we can review later. I'm also going to open Outlook so that I can see what the current state of the mailbox is. Now sometimes this might not be a good idea. For example, if it's a very busy environment, that mailbox could get quite large quite quickly. It might be worth checking with Enterprise Vault Monitoring or with your Exchange Administrators first to get a count of the number of items in the inbox. If you don't and the inbox is very large, it might take a long time to open Outlook. But this is just an optional step. You don't have to have Outlook open. It's just an idea so that you can see what's going on. Now I'm going to start the journal task and let it run for five minutes or so. Remember, I might have to turn off monitoring in Dtrace as it's prone to buffer overflow messages on busy tasks like the journal task. These buffer overflow messages will mean that we might miss the problem. OK, so now I'm going to stop the trace and review it. And I'm also going to stop the journal task in the VAC. I'm opening the trace in a large text editor called Notepad++. Using a large text editor, as we've seen in the past, is the only real way to view files like this. Notepad just doesn't handle things well enough for us to work with it. The first thing that I look for is to see if there are any startup problems with the task. It's also a good idea to review the event log to see if there are any messages are reported by the task. And of course, you can search here for tilde E to see those too. As we can see, there are no startup errors, and as we scroll through things here, we can see what appears to be normal processing. But then look, as we go down, we see a message saying that there is something wrong with the Vault Store status. And a bit lower, we see a message saying that the Vault Store is in backup mode. Well, that will certainly stop the journal task writing data out, and therefore lead to a build-up of items in the journal mailbox. Let's take a look in the VAC. And yes, it is in fact in backup mode. So I'm going to clear that. I'm going to do an MON in Dtrace to monitor it and then restart the journal task. We can see that the task is starting to clear down the mailbox and the issue appears to be resolved. To finish off, we may want to look into why this fault store was left in backup mode. Otherwise, the same thing might happen tomorrow. Here is the second scenario. The situation is that a user has reported an issue whereby they cannot open an archived item. Let's review our approach and then we can see it in action. The first thing to do with this sort of issue is to find out more details and to try the operation yourself on your own archive. Let's assume you can open archived items and that the user reports that they can open some archived items but not this particular one. So we then need to set up Dtrace and try to reproduce the problem from an end-user workstation. 
we then stop the trace and review it. Let's see that in action now. First of all, I'm going to set up dtrace and I'm going to log W3WP, retrieval task and storage online OPNS. These are the processes that are usually involved in item retrieval. Remember that you can use the templates which are built in or you can add your own as we discussed in the previous video. The templates can also be used to get an idea of the things to trace if you're not experienced in running dtrace. Once we set up the trace, we can then go to the end user workstation and with the help of the end user, the item retrieval can be attempted, like here. As the user is reported, we don't see the item open properly, we see just the shortcut. So now, back on the EV server, we can take a look at the trace window and once the retrieval stopped, we can stop the trace and then open the trace file. Here we can see some normal processing. But as we get further down, we can see that when the processes are trying to get the actual file, they don't find it on disk. EV then checks the vault store database to see if it's been moved, but in this case it hasn't, so it logs perhaps scary looking error codes as the file does not exist. Interesting here too is that an error event is logged to the application event log, as we can see in the trace here. As we browse further down the file, you see more and more of the same sorts of error code, but the net result is the same, the file does not exist. We then have to go away and investigate that and see why the file was missing. In my simple example, I've simply renamed this particular DVS file, and renaming it back will fix the issue straight away. In a real environment though, it might indicate serious problems and it's definitely something that should be investigated and worked on. In summary, as we've seen across this video series, Dtrace can help with a diverse range of issues and is very powerful. It's often an iterative approach to narrow down the area that is causing a problem and doing that takes time and some experience. Sometimes though, it's just not the right answer and can be too detailed. One of the ways to get help and assistance is either directly from Symantec or via the Symantec Connect forums. I hope this video giving a couple of examples of using Dtrace is useful to you. Thank you and goodbye.